guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the background. I have a tutorial for everyone that I'm going to show you today. I'm going to make a bet that every single person that is watching this video at one point or another shied away from doing a picture because there was too much open space. New people are more afraid of backgrounds. And today I'm going to change your mind and your attitude towards them. Being an art teacher and a YouTuber, I get to see a lot of pictures that people do that are subscribed to me. I always encourage people to send them to me and not because I want to criticize them. I want to help you guys. So here we have a very large open background. One of the biggest problems that I see is people choosing their color and instead of enhancing the focal object here is the, the flower and the lizard being the focal object they choose colors that are too close to the colors that they used in the focal point and when they go to apply those colors their focal points get completely washed out now i've done an example here on this side of the leaf i just did a, a really quick scribble on the leaf on this side of the leaf, I chose a background in the blue family. On this side of the leaf, I went into the warmer colors and I chose orange and yellow. You could see the difference. If I was to do an all blue background with a green uh, stem and leaves and maybe a red flower, and then I'll have a green lizard, typical colors that you would choose, if I chose a blue background for this, this picture would be just, oh, okay. But if I choose something else that's a little bit more vibrant, that goes opposite of the green, now you have the orange, okay? By going opposite of that green, that green will stand out. So look at the colors that wash it out as being like parasitic they suck the color out of your picture. Where the other colors that are on the other side of the spectrum, opposite, will enhance and it becomes a symbiotic relationship. So let's take a look at the examples that I have. There are 30 of them. Your playlist for the tutorials for each and every one of them is on that card that's in your upper right hand screen. Push on that and you will have a list of every tutorial that I am going to show you the pictures of today. Of course, not all backgrounds have to have such a drastic color difference between the focal point and the background. You don't have to go to that extreme, but I'm going to show you examples of things you can do with the background that are still enhancing. So let's get started. So we'll start from over here. We have the blood moon. And I have a full tutorial on this one. We have the cracked wall. The cracked wall came from a picture from Elena Lazareva. And it was done in grayscale. So the background, I was working on the cracked wall. The witch was already grayscaled. And I hadn't gotten to her. And that's why the colors on this picture are very similar. Had I gotten to doing the witch, I probably would have done her much, much darker. She would have been black. Um, her outfit would have been black with a lot of white in it. And she would have stood out. But I, this was just an example of me doing the crack wall. And it's called Trumploy when you're doing You can easily add sunsets to any picture. I have a video on how to get your black backgrounds really black and in that video I was using a sharpie marker. I still use sharpie markers but I've changed over to the oil base since the oil base has a shine on it and it's really super black. It's also very thick. Over here I did this last Christmas and this is the background that I did in the Sharpie, and this is the paint, Pictura uh, Black, and it, this is a paint pen, and it's, it's really good. Um, I've had this for a long time, and it's lasted, and it's still working perfectly. This has a shine on it, which is what I like for backgrounds, so it's my go-to. I didn't use it in my last video because I couldn't find it. My daughter had to do a 
like a thing for school and she had it. I used that and I, I added in Mod Podge Sparkle. And this is a very fine, fine glitter mixed with Mod Podge. You can put it over your pictures. It dries clear except for the little sparkle that you get in the background. So that that was this picture. I never finished this one. This one I'm going to finish. This is the blurred background. And I only have a little bit, like a couple of leaves to do on it. I don't know why I didn't finish it. This was original artwork. Okay, we have the Neon Fairy. And this was also done with that paint pen, the background, turning it black. We've got the Nebula background. Of course, I just did the fog. And another one from the same set of art uh, by Mario Budek. And that came from Tammy, my gift from Tammy. And this is the stippled background. I did the magic marker and then I, I used the jelly roll white. This doesn't work well over wax. Just to let you guys know, it's not my choice over when I'm doing over wax. But over marker, it's fantastic. All gel pens clog up when you go over wax. Okay, I had this squiggles background this is more a camera trick this is a background that you can green screen with I, I never showed you guys this this was a this was from a contest I did uh, with a graffiti artist friend and we both did a picture and put it up against each other I did the cloud background with the with the bricks I this is old this is like really old um, I can do bricks much better than this now, and I, I should do a bricks video for you. This is one I didn't finish. I was playing with some watercolors, and I did the crackle background. I just never finished it. This is the bouquet background that I did, and I have the full tutorial on it. Remember the Candyland? one that I did and I did add the glitter sparkle to the background on this too. I think that's the last one. No. Okay, the ink stippling. Um, this was another one. I don't know if I posted this one. Maybe I did. I didn't see it among my videos, but this is one that I didn't finish. So close. <laughs> I didn't finish it. And this is the moon background. I do have a tutorial on that. Not too long ago, I did a video for my friend Tammy. And she was doing a picture for another one of her friends. And I did a demo tutorial for her. And I sent her all the supplies she needed. She knocked it out of the park. And I always thought she was a good colorist. I mean, she's very good. She really knocked this out of the park. The first picture I'm going to show you is the one that she wanted to copy. The second one is hers. I think she did a better job. That's just my opinion. She nailed not only my instructions, but went beyond. She did fantastic. So I just wanted to share that with you. I love this red black background. It's simple, yet does the trick. So this is hers okay we got candlelight and i have a tutorial on doing that and you you can mirror it it didn't have the mirror in the background i put that there this one was from last year and it's a pastel background i do have a tutorial on that the fire video that i did you can do a whole background in fire hand lettering the borders Clouds are always a good thing to add to any sky, and I have a couple of tutorials on doing clouds. Northern Lights is a little bit more advanced, so beginners may have a little bit of trouble with this, but I too have a full tutorial on how to do the Northern Lights. Again, I took a plain background and I added in mountains, and this was done in pen and ink, and it was one of Elena's. I believe it was one of Elena's. I did a full pen and ink on this and I added just a little bit of blue into the background. I created the water, it wasn't there before. 
Bubbles are always fun to do, and I have a full tutorial on how I did these. They're great practice, and who doesn't love bubbles? Everybody should be able to add a moon onto your pictures. Just sometimes the sky just needs it, and it, and it becomes almost like a focal point on the pictures. There's one that I did, the fog, that did not have the moon. And once I put the moon in, it really made the focal point pop because it added a lightness to a very dark background. I'm including ground cover in the background because ground cover, as you can see in this picture, covered almost the whole picture. So it became the background. And having a good moss recipe for any time you're doing ground cover is always good in that video has my, one of my favorite moss recipes. I left this for number 30 and that's the, the simple fade. The simple fade should be practiced by everyone. It's when you're able to move from color to color in a very smooth fashion where you're not going to be able to see a line. And I have a tutorial on how to bring depth to a picture by just putting in a smooth, simple fade. When you want to add depth to a picture, you always go light, dark, and then light again. So that's in that video. In my last video, I demonstrated how to do these dots. And I had a couple of people ask me to redo it because the video went too fast and they couldn't see what I was doing. So when I was doing the gold dots in the background, I used two things. I used a dotting tool and I used a, I guess this is called a punch. I got them off of Amazon. They, they came in a set that looks like this. Very simple. Straight into the paint. I'm using Liquitex Gold. Straight down. And it'll get like a little bump in the middle. That's good. So you're going to put some paint on the end and you're going to press. Just when you hit the paper, you bounce up. The straighter you hold it, the better it comes out. Just stamp it. Okay. Then you're going to take your dotting tool and you're going to get some paint on the end. The first time you press into the paper, it's going to make a larger dot. Then you're going to ease up and do three more. Each time you put your, uh, the dotting tool on the paper, you ease up on it. And that will make the dots go smaller. And it just takes a little bit of practice. Now, if you want to do something else and you want to like make a comet, you press down and push to the side. And that'll give you the tail that eases off. And then if you want to make a um, a swirl and you just curve it and those are all things I put in sky backgrounds well that was my tour of 2019's backgrounds and I'm looking forward to 2020 and another 30 backgrounds. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.